needed to do. Interneting, 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 inter... What the fuck? He's made another video? Holy crap. Now, the big question is, do I commentate on it? Well, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are probably going to get on my case for commenting on Dead Horse. But what the hell? What other time am I ever going to do a Guptill commentary? Well, going by everyone, this is Mr. Raven doing a commentary on Guptill89. Now, if you don't know who Guptill89 is, just... Type it up on YouTube, Guptil89 commentary, because I can't explain everything because we're going to be here for a very long time if I do. So let's get the video started. Hey, I just figured out why he calls his video making company D3. Because if you look at D3 sideways, it's making a face like, ugh, this video is going to suck, Bjork. Blockbuster. An organization once known for having nationwide rental stores, places where people could walk around and browse what kind of movies and games they had. It was something that was homey and friendly. Video arcades, places where citizens could waltz around and try out what game cabinets were available and use a claw machine filled with toys. And deal marijuana in the bathrooms, just like public school. Paper letters. Messages that were sent back and forth all the time between friends and family. Which usually took quite a while depending on the distance between said friends and family because it's not instant. And finally, film photography. A circumstance that involved taking pictures with a camera and then bringing the rolls of film to a photosmith to develop. A photosmith? Up till that word doesn't exist. I believe you mean a developer. The word photosmith doesn't even make any sense when you look at it. The word smith refers to a craftsman who works metal into desired forms, with a hammer or other tools, like a blacksmith. Besides, I don't remember ever hearing of someone taking a ball peen to a dark room. These four things were really good to abide by. They involved a lot of traveling, but were simple nonetheless. Until... All that changed. These four elements that used to be parts of life have been replaced almost entirely by these products. Ugh, technological advancement, what is this I don't even... Items that access the information superhighway. Oh, Guptill, you look and act like you just came out of a horrible 80s family Christmas photo. I really don't want to sound preachy and make it sound like I'm repeating what I already thought about the current World Wide Web. Oh please, we passed you sounding preachy and repetitive a long time ago. But when something you feel is important comes along, you need to speak. Here's the deal. The one major problem about the internet that I didn't think to mention before is that in most cases, it is killing Physical socialization. Something we humans were meant to do daily. I'm sorry, Gutzel, but you're really not one to be preaching coming from someone who I'm positive spends countless hours on the internet. And also, after that horrid Sonic anniversary thing you did, I really don't think anyone would have much of a social life after that. But I say, yeah. With Blockbuster LLC closing every single rental store and moving everything they do to cyberspace, despite that there are still over a thousand Blockbuster stores still up and running, online gaming causing so many video arcades to go out of business and so on, although video game arcades have been steadily declining since the early 1990s, and that's more of home video games than online gaming, it seems to me that laziness has reached a whole new level. The way I see it, it seems to me that hundreds of people have forgotten the one simple fact that any piece of technology has the potential to stop working. What? Human technology isn't 100% perfect? My mind has been blown. So you told me that anything has the potential to stop working? You know, like arcade games, film cameras, store security and data, pencil write letters, telegraph poles, tampons and lighting fixtures? Guptil, that is the most flimsy argument ever. If anything, it proves against your point, since technology of the now, compared to technology of the then, usually does a lot better in the way of preventing malfunctions and or system crashes. And once it stops working, you either spend lots more money to buy the same electronic object, or you play it smart and you save a lot of dough by not purchasing the same item. Usually newer devices are fairly cheap to get compared to getting an older and more outdated model. Plus, like I said, newer technology tends to usually be less likely to break down easily. And power outages also play a part in electronics failures. And that is the fault of the electronics... how? You could say the same thing for arcade games, Guptil, because, shocker, they run on electricity too. Why am I pointing out the obvious? 
Well, to quote Undertaker Freak 1127, technology is not infallible. It's never perfect. It never lasts forever. Yes, technology isn't forever because newer devices replace things and make the past technology obsolete. That's called progression. See, if you take the time to think about it... Which you obviously didn't do because you just made a counterintuitive point. Do you really need such high-tech stuff that in the old days only the military used? No, you don't. Heck, I used to use a regular mobile phone. Barely. But I've gotten to the point where I don't need to use one anymore. Because after all, I have no friends and I already live with my mommy. Because, first of all, there's plenty of pay phones around the parts where I live, and secondly, I don't have to worry about people constantly calling me and sending me text messages, because every time you receive or make a call, you end up spending more money than you need to. Yeah, but then again, what would someone rather have? A mobile device that they can have on their person 24-7, or have to search for a stationary means of communication? Plus, Guptil, you may not realize this, but in today's current job market, having a cell phone is very important when getting hired. No employer is going to hire you if you're going to resort to using payphones. How pissed off is your boss going to be if you're not at work and he needs to get a hold of you, but uh-oh, you're not at home. Then you're going to get fired because you don't have a cell phone, you have to move into your mom's basement, and spend your time whining about technology and jerking off the Sonic female characters on the internet. Do I dare click search? Search? Duh, Bjork! Wait, Bjork? And before you jump to conclusions telling me that this problem can be remedied by switching off your cell phone, picture this. Imagine if your companions were having a party, getting loaded, something awful happens to a friend, and another friend tries to inform you about the situation. If your cell phone is off, either they're asked to leave a message, or the dial tone keeps going on for infinity until they hang up. They'd be pretty unhappy, don't you think? Going along with your hypothetical, I don't think they'd be mad because they wasted money on a call. Given the fact that this is a party where people are getting loaded, the party would most likely take place at night. It makes sense that someone might not answer their cell phone as they could possibly be asleep. Besides, wouldn't you be more worried about your friend who had just been injured? Also, because Guptil prides his knowledge on being hypothetical scenarios, what about the deaf Guptil? Kinda hard for deaf people to use a payphone because they can't hear. Or what, do you want them to start using TTYs again? And if you say, oh, they should have an interpreter with them all the time, I'm gonna dumb slap the bitch out of you. The only people I can think of who would need something as expensive as an iPhone are important people, like a leader of a country or a fireman or policeman. Okay, but for country leader, why did you show a picture of St. Basil's Cathedral? That's an orthodox church, Guptil, not a building for the head of government. If you wanted to use the Russian presidential residence, you should have used a picture of the Kremlin Senate. Yes, this is overtly nitpicky, but come on, that's like using a picture of the Taj Mahal example of a presidential residence of India. Online gaming is, of course, another parasite of physical socialization. Like I mentioned earlier, it's causing every single arcade in the world, except in Japan, to lose profit and close. It isn't just home console ports of arcade games. Do arcades need the World Wide Web to function? Nope. Even though you have to pay to use a game cabinet, Xbox Live does the same thing in the web-enabled world. Except it's easier to get to because you don't have to go to an arcade store, and Xbox Live holds more than an arcade machine can ever hold, which is usually one or two games. That means you're losing a lot of cash playing a shooter game all day long, and you're not getting out as much as you should. Well, that's because you're playing Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, I said it! While the PlayStation Network and Nintendo Wii's Matrix offer free service, the fact of the matter still stands. The information superhighway can suddenly go down out of the blue, and it can take days or even weeks to be restored. And I suppose that arcade machines can't ever break down. And plus, I can see losing internet connection for maybe a day or so, but weeks, Guptil? Seriously? If you've seen my second technology rant, it's especially bad if hackers are involved. I love how Guptil provides all these variables that are barely a true glaring factor of the problems. Well, Guptil, let's bounce that back at you. Arcade games can break, and that means calling someone to fix it, which not only takes days, but it can take some serious money. And if it's beyond repair, that means you'll have to get a new one, and physical arcade games are not cheap at all. There's even people whose internet goes down all the time. How is that the fault of the online game itself? That's like saying it's the fault of a car if you misplace your keys and gets rained or snowed in your car if you don't roll up the window. Oh, wait a minute. 
And sure, the plan for a cyberspace blackout on March 31st was denied, yet there will always be a chance of a blackout because, once again, technology isn't perfect. Nej, i rön, er var ekki kunnum það. There isn't much to say about film photography and paper letters. But you're going to rant about it anyways because God forbid you let anything insignificant pass you by. Digital cameras and email have almost entirely replaced these two things. They're still around, but quite rare. Practically, the only people I know who write paper letters are the poor. Anyone else find it racist that he's using a picture of two black people for defining the poor? The Amish? Which, no offense to the Amish, do not believe in technological advancement whatsoever. Wait, why am I saying no offense to the Amish? They're not going to see this. Prisoners. Well, depending on sentencing and behavior, prisoners can be allowed to use email. And military people away from home. And film photography, well... Only about 4% of the world would like to have physical developed photos. Well then, I should tell you something, Guptil. Obviously, if film cameras aren't as popular as digital, then they obviously are not as easy and simple as you said they were. Still, a film photo has better quality than a digital image. I would prefer to have a film photo on my wall over a pixelated and fugitively inked one. Just as you can take your film to be developed, you can take your digital pictures to be printed with very fine resolution. I myself am interested in film photography, but it won't be easy at all to find a film camera since you'll only be able to find one on eBay, at a flea market, a yard sale, or a thrift store. Well, if you're interested in photography, digital cameras are very good with their aesthetics. Digital cameras are capable of much higher sensitivities than films. Dust isn't as big of a worry. They're easier to edit. There's less noise and grain, greater depth of field, and also, as you said, more easily ready to come by. But does that mean film is horrible? No. If you want a great black and white photo, film is a great way to go. Also, film can usually last better with less battery. And for most of the world, photosmiths are extinct. Well, yeah, because photosmiths don't exist. But hey, there are developers. The only people who really develop film these days are x-ray technicians and dentists. Oh, that is actually not entirely true. In the more recent years, doctors and dentists have been starting to use digital radiography in place of film because digital radiography does not need chemical processing and also you can digitally edit and transfer images. But the big advantage is that it uses less radiation to produce. In short, iPhones, online gaming, what have you, with the exception of computers, are just very expensive toys. Well, sorry, Dad. I didn't realize that we weren't allowed to have fun. These are the things the companies and you think you need. And let me remind the viewers that I am talking to regular people. Yes, and regular people, by your definition, all find online shopping, online gaming, email, and digital cameras easier to use and more simpler. If you're going to pander to the regular people, then maybe you should be aware that the regular people can not only meet the monetary needs for these products, but also have a balanced life. You're making this generalization that if you do any of what I just mentioned, then you don't get exercise or read actual books and you don't socialize, which is completely wrong. You know what's more important than your expensive smartphones being glued to your seat playing a web-enabled game and so on? Outside and inside exercise, playing an instrument, spending time with a close friend, and of course, book reading. Oh god, this just turned from another whiny bitch fit by Guptil to a freaking PSA on health. But even book reading is getting a little ruined too with a device called the iPad! A device that requires a battery to run, and you can use it to go online and download a book! Why does that honestly matter, Guptil? A book is a book. Shouldn't you be happy that people are still reading in general? I could care less that someone was reading The Great Gatsby on a Kindle or a paperback. They're still reading the book. I don't see such a big deal about heading to your local library or Barnes & Noble and picking out a physical book that requires no electricity and can last for eternity. Well, some problems with physical books is that too many of them can end up taking up a lot of space. They can also gather a lot of dust, attract unwanted pests like silverfish, and can also be a potential fire hazard. Not to mention, it's not as environmentally friendly as the electronic version, which, mind you, also takes up less space and hardly ever gathers dusts or pests. Plus, it's not a big deal to go to a bookstore and get a book, but it's a BIG FUCKING DEAL to download a book on an iPad. Plus, you're making it sound like that a digital copy can't last for eternity. It's a digital copy, so that means while your worn hardcover is starting to deteriorate, your digital copy is still like it was brand new. It also doesn't get torn, crumbled, folded, and or dog-eared. God, I hate people who dog-eared borrow books. My 7th grade friend dog-eared all over my copy of The Golem's Eye. 
God, that pissed me off. The same thing also applies to renting DVDs. I mean, Netflix and Blockbuster Online are okay, but people have streamed movies and rented them off the web to the point where most, if not every rental store in America, has gone out of business. I feel like I can just sum up the entirety of all of Guptil's Rancher Rack videos into just basically this one little summation. If it becomes easier for people to do, then Guptil does not like it. Thankfully, physical DVD rental is still going thanks to Redbox kiosks and public libraries. Again, I don't see anything wrong with heading to either one and browsing around for a movie. You may argue that you'd be paying more for car gas, yet the same thing applies to the delivery people helping Netflix. Besides streaming, would you rather wait for the borrowed movie to arrive at your house or head to a store or kiosk and purchase it right away? Well, in my experience, online stores usually have a much wider selection than retail stores. Either way, driving is required unless you can get there on foot. Seriously, though, this quote-unquote on-demand streaming business has got to stop. I just want the people who aren't interested in having cyberspace and mobile phones to be fresh out of luck. Whoa, 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 wait. So you want the people who don't want the whole mobile phone and cyberspace thing to be fresh out of luck? Wait, Guptil, isn't that what you're arguing against? In a situation like this, the so-called weak should not have to make room for the strong. No one is saying that, crazy man. Most people are with the consensus that if you want to go to a physical store and buy it, that's fine. If you want to shop on the internet instead, that's okay too, because it's all called preference. Having both physical and electronic interactivity is a more sensible lifestyle for people to live. Which we already have. Plus, sensible lifestyle? Yeah, this is coming from someone who argues about the Gatorade logo change and assumes that people won't be able to recognize it because apparently the regular people, as Guptil describes it, all have the intelligence of a goldfish. And I know what most of you are thinking. You're thinking, you idiot, all this is like saying we should go back to using the telegraph and carrier pigeons instead of the telephone! In a sense it is, because you're arguing against modern utilities that are trying to make things more simpler and easier for the general public. Because not everyone can go out to a DVD store and buy a DVD. It's a lot easier for them to go online. You're kind of missing that important variable, Guptil. Well, that kind of change was proper. The telegraph and phone both require electricity, but the phone is obviously more efficient because the telegraph sent messages through Morse code, and we obviously don't talk in Morse code. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So it makes sense that the telegraph should be obsolete because the phone is a better device. Yet you don't think that letters should be obsolete and that email is more reliable, despite the fact that email is, oh, I don't know, instant? On the other hand, something like streaming films through Netflix instead of physically browsing for a movie in a store or library isn't more rewarding, it's just easy. And God forbid we try to fix something to make it easier and more simpler to use. My God, what horrible people we are. Sometimes the phone service malfunctions, sometimes the internet service malfunctions. It's not the fault of online DVD stores and online games that the internet goes down. That's more the fault of your internet provider or the cables you're using. And they leave you no choice but to go an old way. All I'm saying is, there's more to life than all these nifty devices. And there's more to life than bitching about these nifty devices. My goodness, man, let it be. I may use a computer that has internet, but I used it in the way that it was meant to be used. Which is ranting on unimportant shit. For work, certain research, or for finding something that I can't find elsewhere in the real world, and for broadcasting this message. Which was the very epitome of trivial. You don't need to be tethered to the internet. Expand your horizons. Again, let's make a sweeping generalization that anyone who uses the internet for DVD rentals or for reading books digitally or for online gaming is automatically super addicted to the internet. Like I urged earlier, go for a walk, play an instrument, read a book, go on a date with someone you like. <gasps> nah, it's too easy. Or manually shop for something that doesn't need to be ordered online. Summing up what Guptil sounds like, 
Hey, you kids, stop using the confangled internet and shop at an actual store. You damn kids with your skateboards and rock and roll and liberal viewpoints. Oh, fooey. If it's possible in your area. Oh, now you're going to bring up that variable? Well, gee, Gubtil, that was really fair rant you did because you surely don't understand the idea of outside factors that could be affecting why people shop online. Exactly. First off, maybe they can't get what they want or need from a physical store. Or maybe they just don't have the time or resources to go to a physical store, i.e. they're crammed with work or physically cannot leave the house due to a severe injury. Or maybe it's just easier for people to shop online because they don't have to deal with the hassle of going to a store because shopping at a store isn't always sunshine and lollipops as you make it out to be. It might also depend on what they're shopping for. If I was going to buy, let's say, a cello, I wouldn't buy it online because, frankly, I don't ever trust buying cellos online because it's important how a cello feels to you before you play it. If you don't like how it feels, you're not going to like playing it. But if I was going to buy shoes or a headphone cable, it's so much easier just to order it online because there's a wire selection and it's such a trivial item to go get. Sure, I'd have to wait a few days, but oh well, it doesn't really matter. That is all. Thank you for watching. And at 10 minutes exact, we finish the video. Good is off. Now, I would like to make this analogy. I used King Crimson's in the Court of the Crimson King earlier on purpose because Guptil is the 21st century schizoid man. Not in the sense of where it actually comes from because the song is actually about the Vietnam War, more so in the fact that Gupsil is living in a century where technology is advancing along, but he's paranoid about it and making all these what-if scenarios that are so minute to the problem. Yet despite that, he's staying to go to what we already have, even though three out of the four things he introduced are obsolete. You can play classic arcade games at home, letters are nowhere near as fast as email nor as reliable, and film photography is just too expensive and not as good as digital to still be popularized by mainstream public usage. And as for using pay phones, Guttil, this is 2012. If you're going to get a job, you're going to need a cell phone. The reasons against it are just so stupid and trivial that they really just don't hold up against it. And as of smartphones, since they're cheap and very reliable, it only makes sense that so many would want one. And lastly, the online store versus the physical store. If you want to compare the two, both have pros and cons. The only valid con, though, that I found for online stores that you point out was that with certain items, especially if they're used, it's good to have a look first and see the physical thing. But usually, online stores have a policy that if they have indeed sent you something that is malfunctioned or broken, they will let you return it for free and possibly send you a replacement. Lastly, your con about the internet not working for online gaming or online stores is not the fault of online games or stores themselves. Come to, why do you always make these cons that are not actually the fault of the product? Maybe you should just go back to what you truly know and jerk off the pictures of Rouge. Do I dare again? Search! Duh, Bjor Bjork again? Okay, just because I'm isolated doesn't mean I like Bjork. Shut up. Well, I think I'm going to end off the video here. So until next time, this is Mr. Sir Raven saying, yes, I know I did a Guptill commentary. I know well, probably a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you did a Guptill commentary. Bandwagon. He's old news. And you're right. But you have to remember that I'm a fourth gen loser. But you probably already figured that out since I use Fang the Sniper picks and my username is from Billy and Mandy. Oh, and also bless.